Hello everyone, this is Dennis, VE1XT, here with another video on the log 4 ohm logging application. Today I wanted to go over uh, one of the features that I really like about this application, which is the uh, cat and rig control. This allows you to connect your radio to your computer via serial connection and uh, use the application to tune and even uh, initiate the transmit the push to talk button via the software rather than uh, having to do it on the radio itself. Um, so the setting setting it up is relatively straightforward. Um, we want to go to the settings menu first and then to the options menu. And under here we want to select cat and cluster. Now for the majority of the radios that you're going to be using you will want to select the hamlib uh, library here. This is uh, basically a pre-written application uh, with the code to interface uh, a majority of the common rigs on the market, um, new and older. Um, <clears throat> there would be some rigs that would use the OmniRig format, which um, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that's mostly for the Tentec rigs. Um, I could be wrong, but uh, for this example and the majority of the rigs, you would want to use the HamLib. So the first thing we need to set up are some of these features here. And what I generally like to do is I like to, um, under the cat and cluster heading here, uh, open cat program on start, open cluster program on start. Cat will set mode when following spot, meaning that the radio will change the mode, be it upper sideband, lower sideband, CW, FM, whatnot. Um, and the automatic cluster analysis, that does give us some, Additional features um, <clears throat> in the application, and uh, it, there is a warning here noting that it, it does use more disk disk drive uh, capacity, but uh, generally speaking, for most people who have this installed on a regular PC, you're not going to um, <clears throat> you're not going to uh, have to worry too much about that. Um, so what we would want to do is just make those selections, um, show cluster ungrouped. Uh, I believe that was there by default, so you can just leave that there. Um, and there is the option to use an alternative frequency display, but uh, we will go with the default. And uh, <clears throat> we will click save. Now once we click save, the next thing we do have to do here is we have to click the headset icon, which is the, for the cat connection. And this is where we actually configure the parameters for the specific radio that we're using. In my case, we select the Kenwood TS570S. And as you can see, there are uh, different uh, versions. So if you had the 570D, you would select the version above. Uh, it goes, you know, for Kenwood, it will do the TS440, 450, 480, and so on. So for this one, we will select that. Serial port parameters, these would be the, the serial port that your PC is using to communicate with the radio. <clears throat> In this case, the um, I am currently using a USB um, to serial adapter and the uh, radio is then plugged into that serial adapter with a serial cable. And uh, the baud rate, and stop bits are something that can be configured within your radio's menuing system, but generally I do believe that that is uh, 9600 baud is the standard stop bit one and data carrier detective none. Um, I had left RTS and DTR selected. Um, I believe it works either way. Um, and uh, for the P for the push to talk button, which is this button on the menu in the top uh, of the application. Um, I selected the same option here, TS570S, and selected CAT. Um, and uh, as you're selecting these options in here, you will notice that this parameter string will change. And this parameter string is what log for ohm sends to the backend software, which is this HamLib, to um, initiate the connection with the radio. Um, and once we've done setting this, we would of course want to save the parameter. <clears throat> and now this open and close button is not to open and close this window, but it's actually to open and close the connection to the radio. So in this example, we will just press the open button. And what that will do is that will bring up this window. <clears throat> it's just a command line application. It says that it connected to this rig and 
Um, if you look at the screen on the radio here, you will also see CTRL, meaning that the radio is in uh, control mode. And we will now have the um, ability to control this radio via the program. So um, you can just leave this window open and click back in the main window, or you can click the right X in the top of the corner of that, and it should still work. Um, and uh, so as we can see here, if we do press the push to talk button, we will get a, um, it will initiate the transmit on the radio. And uh, you should be able to see that within the, the little webcam at the bottom left corner with the radio in it. And we also see that we now have a VFO display in the top right corner. And this VFO display will change um, as we change the dial on the radio. There is a little bit of a delay, you will see, but uh, <clears throat> it does update every so often. Now, the neat thing about this is... When we use the cluster feature, so this uh, log for ohm will um, connect by default if you have it set. That's where we have the open cluster uh, on start option that I first showed you there. Um, it will open this little application here, connect itself to the default um, <clears throat> cluster, which is VE7CC, and uh, will allow you to see DX spots on various bands or all the bands or you know, different modes, that sort of thing. So in this example, um, we will be using the cluster in the main program. Um, and we'll see here that we currently have phone mode selected and the 80 meter band. We do see there's a few stations here. So what we can do if we want to say, we want to see if we can hear and maybe make a contact with KHJU, we double click on that. Um, and now you'll see, if you look at the top right corner under VFO, you'll see that we're now on 3740. And you can also see that the radio tuned itself to 3740. And we will see, um, you know, here I have a S9 signal and I don't have the volume on the radio turned up, but that could very well be line noise because I've, uh, I've been uh, suffering from some pretty severe line noise on 80 and 40 here recently. So... Um, but that's, uh, that's a topic for another day. And here we see, you know, if we want to tune uh, to this Australian station, double click, and now we're on 3610. And we can also do the same thing from this cluster on the, this cluster display on the right hand side. So if we want to look at, uh, this station in Chile, this Charlie Echo 1, double click, and, uh, the radio tunes itself to, uh, 14277. And as with all the, uh, when we all, when we use the cluster and we double click a name, we always, or double click a call, we always see it populate here as well. So, um, that's basically it for the, for the basic types of function, function for this. Now, um, we do have another, uh, feature here called cluster scanner which is pretty neat. Um, this cluster scanner will show you, um, since we are currently tuned to 14277, we see that uh, there's been two spots for uh, CE1OEB on this frequency. Now, if there were spots on the cluster that were um, anywhere from 5 to 15 kilohertz above or 5 to 15 kilohertz below, we would see them listed in this here. And then at that point, what we would be able to do is we'd be able to double click and that would center the, would tune the radio, update the VFO and change this display to show the call that you just clicked on. So here's a good example. We have, um, I clicked on KH7XS um, up on 18 megahertz and here we see all the spots that were spotted on this particular frequency, but we also see that five kilohertz up, we have WA5 PFJ, 10 kilohertz up, we have a couple of uh, <clears throat> other stations, looks like uh, I would say Mexican stations there. And so for example, if we wanted to tune into the frequency that uh, XE1 CT is on, we would simply double click. The radio is now tuned to 18075, XE1CT is currently centered because that's the frequency we are on and we see the VFO display has updated. 
So that's kind of neat if you're, um, you know, say if you're parked on a particular frequency or you're listening to a call uh, trying to get through a pileup or something, but all of a sudden you see someone that you want to try to contact uh, slightly above or slightly below on the band, you can double click and that will bring you over to that. So um, if you wanted to stop the connection for the uh, cat control, you would simply click close here. This window would disappear and you would no longer be controlling your uh, radio. And there is also this suspend cat reading, um, which will suspend the polling of the radio of the software to the radio so that, uh, you know, maybe making a change to the, v to the VFO on the radio itself would no longer update the VFO um, display here. However, uh, that's probably not something you're going to need to worry about too much. Generally, when one of these things gets set up, you'll set it up, you'll leave it, um, and you won't generally need to make any further adjustments unless something, unless something changes or something uh, needs to be adjusted or you get a new rig or you want to try a different rig or something. Um, there are the ability, there is the ability rather to also program in some memory channels here in the uh, application somewhere. Um, I haven't really gotten to a whole lot of that, but we do have um, frequency memories here that we can uh, that we can add. Um, you know, so that may be a good thing if you wanted to add, say, calling frequencies on certain bands, or you know, if you wanted to uh, suddenly switch over to the you know uh, fourteen two thirty, where generally you would see you know the slow scan TV on twenty meters. So you can program in some memories there as well. But uh, for now, that's uh, basically um, what we're going to talk about for for the rig control, and uh, that should be uh, a good starting point. Um, if you have any questions or comments or anything of the sort, by all means, feel free to add them to the uh, comment section below. Um, I'll try to get back to anyone and answer any questions that I can. And I will be looking uh, in the future to do some additional videos on possibly some other uh, software applications. Um, various uh, ham radio related. Um, I was sort of leaning towards possibly doing some JT65, JT9 videos and possibly some PSK or um, just any other type of uh, interesting amateur radio application. So if you have any suggestions for that, by all means, I would also enjoy uh, hearing them in the comment section. If you're interested in seeing what else I'm up to, there is, uh, you can visit my website. It should be on the display there. Um, you can visit my website, see my blog posts, and uh, which are generally amateur radio related, but uh, once in a while I may throw an, an IT or a telecom topic in there as that's kind of the world I live in in my, my day job. So thank you for watching and uh, hope everyone has a great day. 73 to all.